are live. So it's Wednesday night, guys. It's Wire Lady TV back again. And uh, today I'm actually in, my, it's super in Montreal. Let me know what the weather's like in your parts. And we're just going to cross our fingers that the Wi Fi is good. So let me pull up the video as always. Just turn down my sound a bit. There we go, and we are going to get started. So if you're hopping on, definitely introduce yourself in the comments and tell me where you are and what you're up to, and that would be great. So just let me pull up the comments so I could see them. I think we should be good here. Yeah, we're good. Excellent. Perfect. So as always, I'm going to flip open, uh, flip over my screen so you guys can see what I'm doing, and we're going to to uh, get started with some patterns on the artistic wire deluxe jig now last week I did a video for how to make little treble clefs with this jig and I thought this week wouldn't it be fun just to trouble troubleshoot some ideas so I'm gonna see what I can do and uh, and well hopefully we get at least one successful design out of this endeavor so let me flip the screen you can see my ba basement there we go and we're just going to pull this around and I'll just put it in sort of the best possible position that I can uh, see what I'm doing and you guys can see what I'm doing and that my iPod is not going to go all over the place. So there we go. That should be good. We can see my hands and I can see what I'm doing over there. So yeah. Um, we have three people watching, so let me know who's watching and where you are. And yeah, if you saw my video last week, I did the treble clef with that jig. And basically all the treble clef was, was it was just three little pegs in the jig to make the treble clef, and then you'd flip it over. So we have Narn Animation and Sketches. Hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome to the live stream. And if your username is not your real name, uh, excuse me if I get mixed up with the usernames, but please introduce yourselves as well. There's Clarice. Hey, Clarice, how are you? So Clarice, here's my sketches that I've been doing uh, for all these designs. So you did the, you've seen the treble clef. Let me know if you actually did the treble clef. I'm in Bali for the summer. Whoa, lucky you. That's awesome. And Brenda's here and Elizabeth. Awesome. Everybody, Yvonne is here. Fantastic, guys. That's amazing. So here are my little um, preliminary sketches for ideas for the jig. Now, you're a little restricted with the jig because of the positioning of the holes. Uh, if you guys have seen my previous videos, you know I make uh, my own jigs out of wood, and I actually poke the... the um, uh, nails into the into the wood. Uh, Yvonne, you were asking about the puzzle piece, so I actually have a puzzle piece uh, jig on the on the wood, and uh, I'm going to attempt to make it with this jig. We're going to see if it's going to work out, and then I thought we could try some simple designs like a star, a heart. Um, what was it? The flower is pretty easy, and the other one I thought would be really cute would be like a dragonfly. So let's get started and see what we can do. I'm getting lots of comments. Sorry if I missed some of your comments, guys. And we have Lindsay, and you can call me Nara. That's cool, Nara. That's easier. And uh, let's get started. Let's see what we can do. So if we start with a basic heart. What you're going to need, so what they what they give you with the kit is they give you like a medium size, a large size, and a sort of a really small size peg and kind of medium size peg. So let's just go ahead and see if we could do some kind of heart. And uh, Jenny says hi, and Mary says hi. Welcome everybody. If you're new, that's awesome. I do live streams every Wednesday night. And... Um, Last week I was out of town, did I? I think I did. I got back on Wednesday to do it. So you see right away, I don't know if you, with the lighting, if you guys can see, but I've just put these in sort of a heart formation. So I'm going to see what I could do about doing a simple heart. So if I get, I, I think I'm going to just work with 20 gauge wire uh, while using these jigs just to, um, because it's a good basic size. And here's Kathy. Hey, Kathy, how are you? So let's just go ahead and just to make a heart, all I do is just take 
the the wire and just bend it like this. Now this was actually a, an idea my daughter had when she was really young. She just took a piece of wire and she bent it and she kind of curved it and she said, oh mom, it looks like a heart. And I ever since then I've been making hearts that kind of look like this. And okay, the other thing we have to remember is when we put these pegs in, we actually have to put the little plastic things underneath because um, if you don't, these pegs are going to wiggle all over the place. So it's good to put these little plastic plugs on here and then that will just hold them in place. So this is actually a really ingenious design. So I had bought this years ago and I never used it and it was only to do the video that I decided to give it a shot. So that's kind of fun. So Lindsay says I want to get that but I hear complaints on the pegs yeah well the pegs you really have to like put those plugs in so that they stay in place uh, I actually prefer to make my own jigs because you can get very precise measurements with it so what we're going to do is just hold that that little one in place and then when I work with the jigs I generally go beyond the next peg and bring it back just to give it a little bit more give so this one too if we go like a little bit beyond and back and then you lift it off and right away you have like a little heart formation. So that's, you know, something that's super simple. You could do just like a simple heart. And I have a bracelet jig like that. Okay, yes, yes. You, there's definitely all kinds of different designs for, you know, different things you can use. And if you want to just finish this off, all I would do for that is just bend one end and just cut it. And then we'll just bend the other one end like that. I have a jig as well and I've not used it. Yeah, well, see, I had this for years and never used it. I just bought it on a whim. Uh, when I originally started making my jigs, which was 30 years ago, there you really couldn't buy anything. And then they came out some, with something called a wig jig, which is sort of interesting, but I never did buy one. So, so my little girl said for me to use pieces of pencil erasers to hold the pegs. Oh, well, there you go. So that's, she's on the right track. Kids are brilliant, eh? They really, they really understand things and are very perceptive. So yeah, listen to your kids and if, uh, or your grandchildren. And these are actually just little tubes. So you could even use like little bits of medical tubing. I've even seen tubing like this in the dollar store that you can use as well. So now the other one I was thinking to try, but I don't know if these are in a good position to do that, would be like a little note. So this was the one I wasn't sure if it would work because I don't know if these pegs are in the right position. But if we do something like that, it's good to be a little bit off, but let me just see. We can try it and see. We can try it and see if this is gonna work. I think it might be a little bit off. The other thing I thought it would be fun to do would be, um, do you guys know those things they are called perler beads? Perler beads are those little plastic beads that you put on a little plaque, a little plastic plaque that has a little pins, like kind of plastic pins that stick up and you put a bunch of colored beads on them. Kids love them and then you iron them together and they melt together. So I was thinking, oh, well, maybe I could use like a little perler bead uh, stand to do to do something like a similar concept. I don't know if it would work or not. So I don't know if you guys could see with the light how I've positioned this for the musical note. So let's give that a try and see if it's going to work. I'm still actually getting the hang of uh, using these jigs because uh, I'm not used to using them with such large pegs. So what you would do for this is just position your wire. Always be sure to hold one in place and we're gonna bend it See, the trouble with these pegs is they're they're not that thin, like they're very round, so it's very hard to get uh, a nice sharp angle with them. So, but if we go like that, that will give you, and if you want to do this end more spirally, just go around, just go around the circle twice. Let's just go around the circle twice, just to make it a little more fancy, okay? And then we're going to lift it off and it's not bad. We already have like a little musical note shape. And then if you want to go ahead and just clip these, make sure you clip them in the more or less the same position so your spirals will be the same size. And then you're going to get your larger round pliers and then just turn the end in a little bit like that. 
and then just bring these in a bit. This is actually aluminum wire I'm working with. I find the aluminum wire doesn't have as much give as the copper wire. The copper wire is very soft and you would get a much smoother kind of uh, uh, curve, I guess you would call it. But this isn't too bad. You know, it's just, um, you just want to be careful with the aluminum, aluminum wire that you don't get little kinks. So there we go. So this actually works quite well. It's not too bad, a little musical note. So what I probably should have done first was make a little loop at the top and center it on the jig. That probably would have been a better idea to make a little loop at the top, center it on the jig, and then that way you would have something to hang the note off of. So there we go. So that's design number two. We have a note and a heart. Now let's go ahead and try the dragonfly. Like you said, see, I already, I also did a sketch for a, a cat, but that looks like it might be a little difficult, but maybe we'll try the cat after just for fun. So let's try the dragonfly. So for the dragonfly, we're going to go ahead and remove these. We'll take these off the back and let me know if anybody actually made the treble clef that we did uh, last week that I did on Saturday because that was a fun design to the treble clef. So if we, what I was thinking for the dragonfly was we'll just put these two here. I'm not sure how far apart. You know what, I think for the dragonfly I'm gonna keep it really simple too. So let me just try something and see if it works. You almost don't need a jig for that, this, but we'll see. So if I get a long piece of wire and I just fold it in half, I'm not sure this is gonna be big enough. And see, there's no pegs in between those si that size and the other size, but let's just try it. So if we go like this for the dragonfly, and then either you could put some beads up there, or we can just do a little twisty thing. So let me try it just with a little twisty thing to see. So if we just make that kind of twisted. I didn't cut my wires super long, so I'm going to try not to make it too big, but you could twist it or you can bead it however you want it to go I'm not holding it very evenly but the idea was you could twist it like that you could um, or add some beads so if you start with something like that for a dragonfly and then just spread open the wings and then the idea would be you would want to center it here so let me just figure out how I'm going to do this so in that case did I, I didn't plug those in very well. So let me plug these first. Okay, I'm gonna plug these in. As always, I'm just kind of troubleshooting here, guys. So if you guys have any suggestions, just let me know. So we're gonna put this here, and then we're going to put this one in the middle, maybe just there. So if we do this, I'm gonna put up one more. If we go like that, that's just to hold it in place. That's just really to hold it centered in place. And then what I was thinking to do was just go over that one and then over that one. So we've got actually two wings, but then we want to do this side as well. So maybe we'll just flip it so we can get this one on the right side. So we're going to go like that. And then we're going to go over that one and over that one. Now I'm not seeing any comments uh, coming up. So guys, let me know if, I, if you still see me. I'm just gonna move the screen a little bit. Let me know if I'm still live, if you can still see me, because sometimes I have glitches with the internet. So let's see, let me know if you, you can still hear me and see me. So we're gonna remove that from, oh, great, you're here, thank goodness. Everybody's so quiet. So there we go. So now I've done the wings, yep. I see you, I'm just intently watching, that's awesome. So we have, see that we've done the four uh, wings. I hope you guys saw how I did that. And then what I'm going to do now is you wanna secure it in the middle. So this is actually working out pretty well. So we're going to just go ahead and do a little loop around here, okay? And then this one we can um, maybe do the same. We'll do another little loop around. And then it would be fun if we put like a little bead. So let me go ahead and get a larger bead. I'll do a nice bright pink one. So this is the, my favorite miracle bead. And then we're just going to like kind of bend that and we're gonna put the miracle bead here. And then let's go ahead and take this longer wire and twist it around 
the back to hold the bead in place. So we'll just bend that around like that. Okay, and now before we finish the antenna, what we're gonna do, so they're gonna be the same size, let's just be the same size. So we're gonna trim them and, oh, there's Nicholas, hey Nicholas. Her, Nicholas says, hello Heather, wishing you a wonderful Wednesday. You too, Nicholas. How's the weather down there in LA? I hope there's not too many forest fires these days because it's very, uh, it's very hot in Montreal. I can only imagine how it is in California. So here's our little dragonfly. We're gonna just bend this like this. And, oh, dra dragon, speak of the devil, dragonfly dream says hi. Well, there we go, just in time we're making a dragonfly. So we've got the basic shape and I'm just wondering if I bent these the right way because they're, they're, they're looking a little bit, I'm gonna, I don't know if it really matters. They're just looking a little stiff to me, these wings, but if you wanna make it on the jig, it works quite well. And then we're gonna get our cone and we're just going to wind this around. Same, almost the same idea as the notes to make like a little, a little spiral. So we're gonna just bend this around like that, okay? And we're going to make little spiral antennas. So we're gonna have quite the collection of things that we're making with the jig. And I'm gonna definitely work on some more ideas. And I know Yvonne, you asked about the, the puzzle piece. So let's let's attack the puzzle piece next to see if it's actually possible to do on this jig because like I said, because of the positioning of the pegs, not all designs are doable, but we can see if we can maybe add some little things to it to try it. So here is the dragonfly, which is super cute. Dragonfly dream from Maine, that's awesome. I've been to Maine several times to um, Old Orchard. And actually this year we were gonna go to Old Orchard, but we wanted to stay in Canada. So we went to Bathurst, New Brunswick, which was super beautiful. So, so yeah, the dragonfly is super cute. So now the puzzle piece, let's see how we're going to do that. So this is gonna be the challenge. Okay, Clary says, I'm falling in love with the jig. I know, it's so fun, eh? And well, tell me about it. I actually hadn't really used it until last week when I did the treble clef, but it's true, there's a lot of possibilities. So let's see what we're gonna do for the um, puzzle piece. I just have to figure out, because uh, like I said, we're a little bit restricted with the size of the pegs. So I don't know if you could see what I did on this one. Um, maybe what I could do is just give it first, give it a try using one of these um, templates. This is the template that they give with the uh, with the jig. This is the one I use for the actual treble clef. So unfortunately, I didn't bring a pencil downstairs. So I, if I mess up, can't do much about that. So, but the idea would be to like you really want to kind of go around these like that. Let's see if it's gonna work. And then that would be around there. And then that one like that. Ooh, this isn't too bad so far. Okay, so it sort of seems to work, you know, as a design. So let's see what we would need to do to actually create that design. So if we bring this over here, and if we wanna just go with the little pegs for now, I'm gonna put these over here, okay. And we're going to just imagine it. So the loop, but I think it's be, I think it's, let's just, maybe we'll just put them here for now and then we can always take them out after. So this would have to be the bigger, the bigger um, circle. Okay. And then we want to kind of skip that one, but see, I want to go around there. So you know what I might do is actually leave, let me just see. You go over this up and to that one. Okay, this might work. And okay, this has to go around there. Let's see what we can do. If we put this one here, I think it's gonna be, oh, not too bad. Okay, and it, you know it's symmetrical, so we're gonna go on the other side. Okay, sorry if I'm not uh, looking at comments right now. I'm gonna try to just figure this out. And then I'll get back to the comments. And then so if we want to go, so we're going to go around that, up, down. And then this one would be a smaller peg. And let's do the same thing here. We'll do a small one. And I'm assuming these are the same size. They don't really have numbers on them, so I can't really tell. 
So if we do like that, and then this one would be the bigger one, one of the bigger ones here. If I have any more bigger ones, I have a feeling they didn't give me too many of those big ones. So what can I do to keep it even? I'm going to put a big one down there and maybe I'll just do the small ones here just to see unless I could find another big one. Uh, no, no, I may, I bet you can probably buy more pegs. Oh, I found one. I bet you could buy more pegs to go with this. These are sort of, this is like the basic kit, but you could probably order more pegs. So let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to start. Sorry, if you guys can't see, here's the setup I have. I have this one here and I'm putting together a collection of um, template designs. So I actually have a wire art course online and a course for the templates if anyone's interested. Otherwise, if you just want one or two templates, I could definitely email them to you. You could let, uh, let me know. So Anne Jeanette says, if you go around the corner with a slightly larger peg, it would give you enough wire to square off with your pliers. I think I know what you mean. And I, I know like if you go beyond the, the peg and pull your wire back, sometimes it, it gives it a little slack and loosens it up. Otherwise, I did bring downstairs some other round forms. So if I find these aren't working, I'm going to try to use some other forms as well. And I know when I make the jigs, I've used anything from screw heads to beads, you know, those um, pile, the plastic uh, crow beads, I've used those where I've hot glued them onto the onto the wood. Uh, buttons, sometimes I use buttons for large uh, circular areas. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Other things I've done when I'm making the jigs, here we go. Other things I've done when I've made the jigs is actually to take, say, a pin, I'll just show you guys, and if you just stick it in like that and wrap it around, well, I can maybe experiment with that after, so we're going to see. So, we go, we've got Jenny, I am new to wire wrapping and the jig looks like it would be, it's a great tool, it's really fun and uh, I've had mine for years, but I, I haven't used it much, but I definitely want to uh, try to use it more and develop some more designs. And so let's see what would happen if we do this. Okay, I'm just gonna check if I put this here. Trouble is sometimes if you put something in there, you're not gonna be able to get uh, the wire in between. So that's why I was thinking if I had like a nail, maybe I could just use the nail. See, this is interesting too. So this is like being a little bit ingenious and trying to add your own tools. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to do that. So if I start at the top and just do like a, the top part of the puzzle, and then we're going to use this nail to bring it up and around. Okay, we're going to try that. And then down. Okay, and this too we might have to do. I'm just trying to think of how we're going to do this because I'll show you how it works on my jig after to see if it's going to work. This might not work. Okay, you know what I'm going to do is just try it with the with the beads we have or with the um, pegs we have here. It might not work at all, but let's just give it a shot for now just to see. Go with what we have. I really don't think it's going to be quite right, but it's in experimenting that you figure out how to do things. So I think we just don't have enough pegs here, but I will show you how the other one works to show you the difference between working with a commercial jig and working with a homemade jig. Because I can see right now it's not going to give the same effect as I would like with the other jigs. So I'm still using my nail just as a little bit of a guide. It's hard to get a little small in. So, so what you'll see here, so this is what I started with. This is what I came up with, but you'll see it doesn't have the same kind of clean edges on there. So let me just have a look at it again, just to see. You almost, you know what you would almost need is a square, like a couple of square pegs, or you need these holes to be closer together so you can put more pegs. Like, I don't know, let me know if you guys know if they make jigs with um, smaller 
pegs and smaller uh, spaces in between. But let me show you to compare it how it works with the jig that I made. So if I cut a piece of wire, okay. So this is the one that I made. And what I did for that is I actually made a little tool. And basically what this tool is, it's just a, um, a paintbrush with a little pin that I stuck in the end. So Kathy says, I had to get creative when I made mine with a jig. A, a, I screenshot a picture of your wooden jig. Cool, yes, yeah, you have to, you have to um, be a little bit creative. So what we're good, and Brenda says, where's the diagram? So the diagram, yeah, the diagram is here. This was the diagram, and just to show you guys, the diagram, so I put this, I put this one peg here. This middle one is where this goes around, but you'll see you, what you really did would need here would be two small pegs rather than one peg because this just makes a curve and you really would need two small pegs there instead. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back to this one and then I'll see if I could go back to that one and see what happens. So we have Verdella Williams says, hello, Heather. Hello, hello, welcome. So we're trying to do this puzzle piece. We're gonna see how it goes. So now let's try it with the wooden jig. So as you'll see on the wooden jig, I just put little nails in the, in the corners where you're going to bend the wire. And then where you need the curved areas, I'm gonna use the, the, the jig. Um, you like yours better. So yeah, so let's try this. Let's try this one and see. We'll try it on mine and we're gonna just You'll see how using these smaller pins makes a really much cleaner Much tighter design, especially if you're making earrings. You don't want them to be too big So right away, you'll see we've got more of an angle there and then I'm gonna stick this one in here and then you curve it around and you'll see it's going to make the curve. So now when I remove that, you're going to see it makes a nice curved line. So we're going to go around to the other ones. Same thing. And what I did was I basically just drew out a puzzle piece on a piece of graph paper. And when you put it on the graph paper, it you could make it perfectly symmetrical. You know, you could you could uh, touch up, touch it up to make sure that it's the same on both sides. And even if it's not perfectly symmetrical, it's totally fine. So this one, I'm just putting in the little round form when I can. It could have even been smaller, the round form, but this is just what I made. So we're gonna go with that. And then this one here at the top, we're gonna push it down like that. So this is how it looks on my jig. And then we're gonna flip it off and I'll show you how you can finish it. Okay, and sometimes it gets a little bit stuck, but that's okay. So we're going to remove that, and you'll see right away the jig is much more precise, right? So let's go ahead, and to finish it off, it's super easy. We're just going to straighten it out a bit, and then we're going to twist this end around here, because this you have two choices with this. You can cut it off or you can add a bead, but because these circles are quite large, you're not gonna be able to dangle much of a bead down there. Clarice says, I like your jig. Yeah, it looks way better, eh? With the, when, you, when you manually make the jig, because the artistic wire uh, jig kit is very cool, but it's really better for um, kind of looser designs. You know, if you want very precise jigs, you almost have to make your own. Unless they do have ones that are smaller, I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do is rather than dangle the bead on here, I do have a tutorial on my channel to show you how to make the uh, puzzle piece where you can dangle the bead, but because these loops are quite a bit larger than what I normally would do, see, this is the idea. So you could definitely, you know, trace out a puzzle piece and do it that way. But let's go back to this one and see what our problem is here. So I think it's these pegs. That's, I don't know if it's gonna help, but I'm gonna just try to remove these for now, that size, and just to see how we do with that. So I'll just remove those, okay. And then we're left with our kind of basic, uh, basic um, 
large pigs but I'm really not sure this is going to work at all so let's just give it a try so if we just go ahead and go like that so if I use the nail let's see if this is going to help at all so if we go up we go up like that and then you would want to bend it down but then you'd want to kind of bend it down around again. I really don't, I really think we're very restricted with this. Oh, well, it kind of worked. Let's just try it a little bit more. Okay. Around. And then this one here. It's kind of wobbling around a bit down. Yeah, this is. I think it's not going to work so well, which is unfortunate. So I think for now, the puzzle piece isn't going to work with these, with the, you know, the configuration, how it is, unless we just tried for a bigger design, which is something else we could do. So let's remove these. And if we did like, say this, and then we got the little ones. Let's see if that would work if we did two. Because you'd have to, you really have to put them beside each other, right? And then we'd have to put, or maybe even put this over here. We'd have to put two, let me remove these plugs, these two, and then you'd need a big one over here, okay? And then the little ones over here. This might work to make a, like a bigger one, but we can see. So let's see if we do like that. But even that, I think we're gonna have trouble with it because we're gonna go like that. I'm not even gonna put the plugs in for now because I'm really not sure it's gonna work. So if we go down like that and around, it's very, very tricky. And then we'd have to so we just go down like that and we're just swinging it now so this one's super big it's a little too big wow this is not quite working but yeah so see just playing around with it but I think I'm gonna give up on the uh, on the puzzle piece for now and uh, I'm gonna work on that I'm gonna see if it and if I come up with something I'll definitely put a picture of it on the um, in the Facebook page on the wire art and jewelry makers Facebook page and then the other thing I just wanted to try to see quickly is if we could do a little kitty cat so I don't know if that's gonna work or not so but what we would want to do is start with the two small ones for the ears and then we have a little loop here that's going to be for the head. So if we put that there, let's just give it a try. And I think I'm going to just work on this as I go to see where I have to add the beads. So maybe I'll just go ahead and secure a little one here. Okay, a uh, little one, one, two, maybe I'll take this one. Okay, so if we go like that. Okay, let's try this. So we're going to start with three pegs and I'll just secure those in place and see how they go yeah let me know if you guys do work on the puzzle piece uh, puzzle piece one and uh, Kathy said the bigger one worked for me so Kathy the the one that you put in the Facebook group you you actually use the jig for that one the puzzle piece I'd be really curious to see the setup for that Maybe you could post a picture of the, or did you post a picture of the jig? Now I don't remember. We have so many members now in the group that sometimes pictures get by me and I don't always see them. So to make the cat, what I was thinking is you could just kind of do like a basic startup thing like that. Yes, you did. Okay, so I'm going to go back and, and check it out to see the picture of the, of the jig. So, and then if you want to do like a little cheek of the cat, say we put that one, should we put it in or out? maybe there so if we go in like that okay you know that one too I think maybe I'll just go ahead and plug that one here yeah yeah so Yvonne definitely wanted to see that jig Kathy so maybe tag both of us in the picture so we can we can check it out again that would be awesome okay so now if I put another peg here I'm thinking or should it be over one yeah, you know what? I'm going to put it here. So we're going to put another peg here. 
Okay, and Laura says, thank you so much for sharing so many fun and beautiful. Oh, you're very welcome. This is so much fun. I have a lot of fun with these live streams. You guys are so patient with me. So we're going to bring this down. And then fun to do like a little foot thing. So just a little, see if we just push it out like that. And then a bigger one for a foot. Okay, so there we go. So we've got like a basic kind of cat shape here and it's a little distorted but it's okay and then if we just do one like that and then if we just kind of bend that around like that okay I thought it'd be fun to do like a little just a little kind of shape like that and then if we remove it it's just like a sort of a fun little cat shape okay and then it's in sometimes it's in the finishing touches that you can do things so if we just bring this wire around like that and then i'm going to cut one end off i'm using 20 gauge wire for this but if you're making a larger decoration like this you might want to go with a slightly thicker wire like even up to let's say 18 gauge or something and so we have a basic shape for the cat i'm going to move these pegs out of the way and then it would be fun like if the if the tail was like a spiral so if we just bring that one up and the same idea we can use our ring cone to create the spiral go like that and then around and around so when you just wind it up the spiral it gets a little smaller as you go up and then at some point you have to just clip the end and then we're going to uh, bring the spiral in like kind of Turn the end with, with your pliers. I use my larger round pliers for that. And then just slowly bring it in like that. And like I said, the aluminum wire isn't as smooth as the copper wire, but it's uh, it'll give you the idea. And you'll see the aluminum wire does kink a little bit, but at least to give you an idea. So right away, it's kind of cute with the little tail. And then what I thought would be fun was to do whiskers, but maybe we can do them in a contrasting color. Uh, this wire or this one. I'm going to use a slightly thinner wire for the whiskers. This is a 22 gauge wire. And what I want to do for that is I'm going to measure out. Okay, this is going to be, I'm going to make a couple of pieces this size. And then a couple of the pieces, uh, one piece is going to be a little bit bigger. I'll show you why. Okay, I'm getting lots of comments, sorry. Uh, da, 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 Kathy, I'm not sure if the jig is in the picture. Yes, yeah, because I don't remember seeing the jig, but maybe that was my mistake, I'm not sure. Show us your jig so we can screenshot it, yes. Uh, this the You want me to show you the jig for the cat? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely do that after. So I'll do, like add the whiskers, and I thought it'd be fun to add the whiskers with the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I've got two wires that are shorter one that's a little longer and then what i'm going to do is i will wind them together so i'm going to just wind this around the middle okay and so we're going to have the top wire is going to be the longer wire okay and if you imagine this in the cat okay it's going to be like that in the cat in fact Maybe I'll go ahead and attach these wires first. I think I will. So if I go ahead and attach the smaller wires first, we're just basically going to wind them around a couple of times to hold them in place. Okay. And then on this side too. Okay, we're just going to wind it around to hold them in place. And it looks a little messy right now, but you're going to see it's going to be cute. So we're going to wind that around. And then we're going to wind the middle whisker in place. And this wire is pretty forgiving because it's 22 gauge wire, uh, the copper wire. So it's quite thin and quite flexible. So there we go. And then this middle one here, wind it a couple of times. And then because we want to add eyes to it, I've made the top whiskers a little bit longer so we can actually add some wires. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So here's the cat so far and let's find some beads that we can add 
to this, just see which beads I want to use. I can maybe use green beads. What do you think for the eyes of the cat? Should I use green or blue or purple? First person to comment, I will choose the color. Green, purple, or blue? Any 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 preference of colors, guys? These are the miracle beads. I have um I have some purple, I have navy blue, or I have green beads. That would be cute for the eyes. Green. Okay, Kathy. Yes, there we go. So let's put the green. I think more cats have green eyes than blue, and certainly more green than purple. So we're gonna what you want to do is sort of hold it, suspend it in place like that. Okay, and then we're going to hold it so it doesn't move and then wind this wire around the eye a couple of times to hold it in place. And so what that does, it suspends it in the middle of the face, which is really cool. So and then we're going to wind that around the edge a couple of times. Otherwise, it's really hard to get eyes that are like suspended in the in the cat's face. And then now we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're just going to get that one in here and try to kind of center it how it is on that side. And then we're going to wind it. It's cute. Yeah, it's a very cute idea. And um, there's a lot you can do with this. I actually have a bookmark design that I make with the cat with the whiskers like this. You can make a pendant. There's so many things that you can make with the people love kitty cats. So who, who here has a cat? Uh, what? No red eyes? <laughs> Yeah, this cat needs sleep. He needs, has gonna have red eyes. You never know. I think I think aren't there some cats, white cats that have pink eyes? I'm pretty sure there are. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not personally a cat person. Uh, Kathy has a cat, and is it uh, Batkin? I'm not sure your name, but that, that's your username or has a cat. Yeah, I actually used to have a bunny, but uh, haven't had a cat since I lived at home many many years ago. So we're going to just clip these whiskers now so they're all more or less the same length. And now we are going to make them a little more fancy. We're just going to wind them up. So let's go ahead and take the end of the whisker. And just because these are larger round pliers, I'm just going to wind them around like I did with the spiral form and wind them around the pliers. And then that way, it's going to form a spiral as well. So we go from small to big as we're winding. And this part takes a little bit of time, but you'll see it's it makes a really nice effect. So if we wind them like that, then we're going to go. So Yvonne says, I run from cats because my grandma cat has jumped on my chest when I, oh, and has a, ee, yuck, that's traumatizing. Oh my good, love them or hate them. I don't hate cats. I just, I'm actually allergic to cats. So so that's one of my, my pet peeves with cats, but um, I like bunnies because they're very quiet and sweet So, and harmless. Although some people are afraid of bunnies, so you never know. So let's go ahead and do the same on this side. We're just going to twist the ends a little bit. That should be more my question. Who here has bunny rabbits? Judy brought you a mouse because it was a gift to say she loves you. <laughs> oh boy, that's quite the gift. And that's what cats do. Eh? They bring they bring their owners uh, dead birds and all, all kinds of lovely stuff. So I've definitely heard that before. So there we go. So we're, we're going to wind these whiskers and then we're just going to flatten them out. Okay. I might adjust these a little bit because I'm finding them a little bit too stiff. But... Uh, so like this one, you know, I had them all pointing the same way, but I think what I'm going to do is actually flip this so one's, some are pointing down and some are pointing up, just to make it a little more uh, interesting. And then we're going to close this up. And then for this cat, you could use it as a decoration. Somebody in the Facebook group had asked about making a sun catcher. It would be cute to do a sun catcher. And this is sort of a basic shape, but there's a lot you can do with it. And then we're just going to bring these up. So you could definitely adjust these whiskers how you like. And now these two whiskers are a little bit close together now. So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and, and adjust them if you needed to separate them a little bit. I think it just takes a little bit of experimenting to see what you want to do it. But that's the idea is to do like a silhouette of a cat 
Um, you could probably do many different positions, but just basically for the jig, what I did was I did the basic form of like the top of the head, the cheek, and the foot, and then where you bend the... So this one I could definitely, maybe I could draw that. I'll, I'll just start collecting ideas for templates and writing them down. That's, that's that. So guys, let's see what we made. So we made um, the cat the dragonfly, the note, let me know what's your favorite, the heart, and then on the not artistic jig we made the puzzle piece. So I'm going to bring these down. So, okay, Dragonfly Dream had a 11 year old Neanderthal white bunny. Aw, oh, sweet. And now a lab. Cool. J'aime beaucoup la chat, oui. Yeah, I the cat turned out really well. So there, let's bring it up so you guys can see them. And that's what we did. So whew, we've been on for 45 minutes. Hard to believe, but I I, th I feel like we got a lot accomplished today, guys. I'm going to flip the screen. Laura says, love the dragonfly. That's awesome. So let's put, ah, there we go. So guys, thanks so much for watching as usual. That's awesome. Kathy says, great job. And uh, I'm, yeah, hope to do another live stream next Wednesday. Summer's always a little touch and go because there's so much going on. And to all my American friends, happy 4th of July. We celebrated our uh, Canada Day on Monday on the 1st of July. And I know everybody's celebrating in the States uh, tomorrow. So have a wonderful time with your families. And uh, thanks everybody for, for hopping on. Be sure to join the Facebook group, the Wire Art Jewelry Makers Club, if you're not already a member. Share pictures of your work. And if you have any requests for jig designs, just let me know. And I'm gonna also look in to see if they do have other jigs that, have, um, that you could use smaller uh, pegs with. And if not, I'll figure out a way we can improvise it. So thanks guys for watching and we'll definitely see you in the Facebook page and next week on the live stream. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.